Yeah. In the book, you talk about masculinity and femininity, but you also mention how they're culturally conditioned in some way. Because oftentimes when we look up femininity or masculinity, especially within conservative Christian circles, let's say, mm. there's a, a very, it's much more culturally determined and conditioned than necessarily a biblical understanding of what mm. masculinity and femininity is. Why is that so important to hold on to that distinction in the here and now? Yeah, there's, there is so much confusion around us about gender identity and, and what is a man and what is a woman. We can unwittingly add to that confusion if we're saying things about being a man and being a woman that the Bible just doesn't say. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've met wonderful godly men who have been made to wonder if they are real men because of some quite arbitrary cultural stereotype that's been placed on them by the church. Um, if they're not sporty, they're not a real man, or if they're not whatever it might be, or not loud or brash or something. And you sort of think, well, that, nowhere does the Bible say that I have to be athletic or sporty to be a real man. Um, so we, we don't want to – our culture is saying much less than the Bible does because our culture is saying male and female is not really a biological distinction anyway. But I, th I think sometimes the church ends up saying more than the Bible says by saying, oh, well, yeah. being, a, being a man means X, Y, and Z. And we're putting things on people that, that God doesn't have – hasn't said and that's that's always a very serious error um and some of the cultural responses have been to i think that kind of christian extra biblicism um and then the more we see the kind of cultural soup of gender identity then then the more the church sometimes is tempted to be even more specific on exactly what it means to be a man and exactly what it means to be a woman. And there are some things that are, are meant to be true of men and true of women, but it's one of those areas where we, we really need to make sure we say only what the Bible says to the extent that the Bible says it and with the same kind of tone that the Bible says it. How would then you define or describe, let's say, masculinity to someone and femininity to someone? Well, that's the, the $64,000 question, and it's really hard to answer because mm. some of part of the answer will depend on where they are. Culturally speaking, like what yeah. arena? Yeah. Because there, you know, our masculinity and femininity has to be embodied and culturally expressed somewhere. And some of those cultural expressions are morally neutral, some of them are morally wrong, and we need to resist them, and some of them are morally virtuous, and we need to promote them. Um, so in one time and place, part of what it means to be a man might be that you hold the door open for a woman. Mm. And many of us would say that but that's a pretty virtuous understanding of, of being a man. Um, that might be different in another, in another culture. Um, and it, it's one of those things where, you know, we, we both men and women are to bear the same fruit of the spirit. It's not as if women have one half of the fruit and men have the other half. All of us are called to be full of life, you know, love, joy, peace, and, and so on. So we can't say, well, gentleness is a feminine thing and, and lack of gentleness is a masculine thing. No, no, gentleness is meant to be a spiritual thing. Um, but having said that, I think the fruit of the spirit in, in a godly woman will produce biblical femininity and the fruit of the spirit in a godly man will produce biblical masculinity. I'll recognize the difference. I won't always be able to pin it down. 